Good morning and uh, welcome to uh, Covington. We're so pleased, uh, Angela, to be able to host you all uh, here today. And we're joined by our team at Covington. Uh, that is a fast growing team focused on uh, carbon, on clean energy. We're doing everything from California CSRD disclosure, EV transition, the Green Bank, you name it. Uh, we're, we're, we're helping uh, companies uh, navigate all of the opportunities that have been created uh, by this administration. And we are thrilled, John, to have you with us uh, today, the man who is leading uh, the IRA uh, implementation. Um, I actually first met John when we were both younger, much younger, working on Capitol Hill. We uh, started our careers over on the legislative side and then quickly migrated to the executive side. Um, I think there's a lot more power on the executive side. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, John, as you know, has a very distinguished uh, career, White House uh, Chief of Staff, State Department Climate Negotiator, um, and brings really a breadth of uh, experience and knowledge in terms of how the government operates. And as he leads the effort to implement the IRA, this is essential because um, you know the government can be very stovepiped. And what John understands is how agencies need to work together. And sometimes you need the Department of Treasury with transportation, you know, whatever mix you need to really affect uh, the change that the IRA um, envisions. And uh, he didn't have enough on his plate. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I was. Uh, John and I have been friends a long time. I was betting with some other friends that he wouldn't take the carry job. I lost the bet. Uh, he took the carry job and is now also uh, leading the, the spec office and in, in, in those um, efforts. Um, what we're going to do today is just spend a little bit of time in a conversation about you know sort of what's on the agenda. And what I want to start with, John, is the IRA implementation, obviously. Sure. And it's impressive. I mean, I, I looked up what's been done. I'm sure the numbers changed last night, but as of last night, I found there was a 400 billion plus that you got, of which more than 100 billion has been invested. There are 150 new factories that have been announced. Uh, the sale of EVs and large scale solar deployment uh, hit a record high. Uh, last year, Earth Day, Monday, you announced $7 billion in Solar for All, the American Climate Corps, and those were just the high notes. There's a much, much more. And so my question, my first question is, what's left to do when you think about... <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot left to do, Carol. Okay. Uh, so first of all, that do? money needs to be deployed. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let me start by saying it's good to be with you. And when Angela was introducing our panel and saying we don't need any more climate talkers, I thought she was canceling this panel. So I'm glad that you let us come up here and, and talk to each other again. But there's a lot more to do. I think what we've seen is a tremendous response from, from the private sector as a result of uh, the structure of the Inflation Reduction Act. I describe it as government enabled, but private sector led. Most of the uh, uh, support for this transition to clean energy is coming through the tax code. Uh, so we've already released uh, 50 pieces of tax guidance and the private sector's responded to that with the kind of numbers that, that you described. Uh, um, we count $383 billion worth of, but it's, you know, every day there's, there's more uh, of announced invest, investments in clean energy. There's also a very significant uh, investment uh, in uh, demonstration in uh, that, was uh, part of the bipartisan infrastructure law as well as the IRA uh, and money that's really going to ensure uh, that uh, communities that have really borne the brunt of power sector and industrial pollution get the benefits of this clean energy transition, uh, both in terms of putting people to work, but also cleaning the air. So for example, this morning, uh, EPA has announced another billion dollar notice of fund availability uh, for, to uh, de decarbonize heavy duty trucks, class seven and class eight uh, trucks, garbage trucks, school buses, uh, heavy duty trucks to clean up, you know, help in the process of uh, cleaning up uh, particularly the most uh, polluted parts uh, of uh, cities, ports, et cetera. So uh, that effort is also, I think, uh, going well and we're seeing uh, the fruits of that. But you noted a couple of things. This is Earth Week, so happy Earth Week. <laughs> and on Earth Day, the, the uh, president announced $7 billion uh, in Solar for All grants. That completes a $27 billion uh, package of financing uh, to help support uh, uh, particularly deployment of clean energy uh, to disadvantaged communities, poor communities, 
uh, solar for all, for example, will uh, mean that between rooftop solar and community solar, uh, nearly uh, a million families will have their, uh, be able to uh, both have the benefits of clean energy and see their bills lowered on average by $400, uh, a total savings of $350 million across the country. So we're very excited about all these programs, but yeah, there's a lot of moving parts and there's still a lot of work to do. Um, it's impressive what's been done. I, I, I feel like when I look at this, we're involved in an industrial revolution in this country, a clean energy industrial revolution. I mean, it is on this, you know, when I had the opportunity to work for President Obama and we got 80 billion, boy, we thought, wow, $80 billion. And you guys, you know, went out and uh, overran that significantly. Um, the um, one thing I, as we navigate work with our clients on, um, uh, whether it's a EPA grant, a DOE grant, an LPO program, whatever, I am so struck by the commitment of the administration, and you mentioned this, uh, to an, a just and equitable transition. And kudos to you guys. I mean, really holding applicants, you know, your feet to the fire in terms of you got to deliver on this, you've got to have the training programs, you've got to have the apprentice programs, um, and, you know, the, the community benefits work that goes on over at DOE. It, it's, uh, it's impressive. I, you know, I, we were part of getting the first executive order signed under President Clinton on environmental justice. And, right, which you know, was just updated and covers now updated, the whole government, yeah. but President is, Biden signed that. It was a big uh, deal when we that. did it, and it's a much, I mean, I sort of feel like we did it, but then we never had the opportunity to do what we needed to do, <laughs> and you guys are doing yeah. uh, what needs to, to and be I, done. And, you know, I think that at the cabin, sec at the secretarial level, I know uh, mm -hmm. Secretary Vilsack could be here later, uh, I think people are very, very uh, committed to ensuring the implementation of that order, so... Uh, that was Great. an exciting moment. Let me um, switch topics and talk about, um, you know, sort of reporting, measuring, um, you know, as we transition to, I, I don't want to talk about the SEC situation. We're all aware of the twist and turns there and we'll see what happens. But stepping back from that, um, how do we transition the economy to net zero with, you know, out businesses really measuring, pricing, managing their carbon emissions? And if you could talk a little bit about carbon offsets, and obviously the administration also had an announcement on, on carbon offsets, I think that would be of great interest to the audience. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I want to pick up on one thing you said, which is the industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. And uh, Is that a bad phrase? Industrial, I don't know. No. We're sort of correcting the last one. <laughs> well, I, 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 I always uh, reference back to the 2018 uh, IPCC 1.5 report, which people in this audience will be familiar yeah. with which really uh, uh, reoriented uh, the global community to the fact that we needed to uh, not just be under two degrees C, but we really right. tried to keep uh, global average temperatures from uh, going above 1.5 degrees C because the damage to the planet was so, so uh, severe between those two poles. And so everything we can do to keep that uh, in uh, uh, alive and and real is is important, but in that report they they uh, said what that will take is we need to be taking as much carbon out of the atmosphere right. as putting into it by mid century. We need to be have a net zero economy, and what that meant was a transformation of the global economy on the size and mm -hmm. scale that's never occurred in human history. So <laughs> that's the challenge, and we have now, you know, 25 or, you know, 30 years to do that, to get to that point. Uh, and so talk about a transformation that is a massive transformation of the economy, but one that is a tremendous opportunity to build these uh, new clean uh, industries and, and move forward. One aspect of that uh, is high integrity uh, carbon markets that can be, um, Secretary Kerry at the, at the State Department uh, led an effort to really develop uh, a, uh, the so-called ETA. He, uh, Friday, we, uh, last Friday at the State Department, we saw more momentum in, in that regard. Uh, Secretary stood up, he chairs an advisory committee uh, to ensure that you're getting real reductions uh, and that um, those aren't being used to kind of defer decarbonizing their right. own operations, but can be uh, used to uh, uh, for, uh, you know, harder to, uh, to uh, particularly on the corporate community side, to be able to uh, 
uh, play some role in, in reducing mm -hmm. scope three emissions in, on, on the carpet side. Uh, so uh, the government will have more to say about that in terms of we're, we're developing and we'll shortly release a policy more broadly on, on the integrity of carbon markets oh. to make sure that uh, that we uh, that they, they you know, this has been a controversial area right. because there've been sort of uh, uh, false start and stops yeah. and and uh, uh, and the, you know the the criteria that go into this that they be uh, jurisdiction wide, not project specific, etc. Uh, are important safeguards Hugely. to make yeah. sure that these offsets really have integrity and that they're permanent. So, uh, so who again, will be putting out? It'll be guidance that'll be put out. Yeah, it'll come out from the uh, from uh, uh, the interagency from process. The interagency process. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, let me switch to a, a global question. Uh, you have a long history of working on climate change. We worked together on some India issues, uh, China. When you think about the U.S.-China, the U.S.-India relations through your current position, I guess two questions. What worries you and what are the opportunities? Well, I think what uh, worries <laughs> me in... in uh, it, are you talking about more broadly the international uh, arena? I think what we need to do is really uh, ensure that we're both, uh, uh, as I said, on track to that 1.5 aligned uh, commitments that has to come from, from really across the globe and particularly from the uh, high emitting economies. Uh, and number one there is China, right. uh, which is the largest emitter now. Uh, and it, you know, is still uh, building coal-fired power in, in China. That they have to peak and come down. They're also investing substantially in uh, clean technology, uh, but that has its own uh, uh, challenges. I think Secretary Yellen was just uh, recently in Beijing, uh, raised the question of overcapacity uh, and unfair practices in that trade. Uh, I think we all need to. Uh, do what the United States is doing, which is invest uh, in the de in the development the and the deployment uh, of clean technology. But we need to do it in in a fair way. So we're watching very carefully what the Chinese are doing and uh, what the PRC is doing. Uh, and uh, we've made our uh, points known to them. And the secretary spent a good deal of time there, saying that their latest. Uh, uh, investments uh, and uh, global deployment of, of clean technology is problematic because the, it's uh, uh, and and we intend to use all the tools we have to ensure that we're protecting the investments we're making uh, at home. So uh, you know if they if they're uh, dumping uh, across the world, that essentially undermines other people from. Uh, trying to build those uh, industries, create those jobs, deploy that uh, technology uh, here at home. We've seen, a, as a result of the Inflation Act, a massive uh, investment uh, both in uh, manufacturing in the in the battery and electric vehicle space and uh, in the uh, solar and solar supply uh, manufacturing chain in deployment across the board. Uh, some of the newer technologies, including uh, clean hydrogen, mm -hmm. you know, DAC, et cetera. And we want to see, uh, you know, we want to protect those uh, investments and make sure that uh, people are doing the right thing and, and, and deploying uh, that uh, and utilizing the support that the federal government's giving through that tax code that I mentioned earlier uh, to, build, to build those industries and put uh, people to work. And anything India special in terms of that U.S. I think we have relation? a you know we have a, a, a good uh, relationship there. The D D Development Finance Corporation is uh, supporting the development of uh, uh, a pr in particular uh, solar supply chains in India. So we've uh, had an ongoing uh, you know going back to uh, well I would say going back to President Clinton's trip yeah. in 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 2000, but definitely during the Obama administration, mm -hmm. a very uh, strong by, uh, and, and it was true in, with uh, President Bush too, who put energy as an emphasis in the relationship mm -hmm. uh, through the development of the uh, negotiation around uh, deploying nuclear, uh, okay. civilian nuclear power uh, in India. 
And then Obama picked it up with clean energy. Uh, the mm -hmm. even <laughs> I have to say, even the Trump administration emphasized energy. It was mostly about selling gas to, to India. But I think we're back at it uh, and uh, want to ensure that they're both uh, 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 trying to support uh, through the deployment of their own very substantial goal to deploy particularly solar power uh, in India, that they have the means to do that, and that, uh, that they, uh, through hosting the International Solar Alliance, uh, are also helping the rest of the world um, uh, deploy clean technology. I met uh, with uh, Ajay Mathur, who's, mm -hmm. who runs the ISA yesterday, and we were discussing the opportunities for the U.S. to work uh, with and through the ISA and with uh, India to deploy more solar power in Africa, uh, more uh, clean technology in Africa, including two and three wheel vehicles. So I think there's a lot of uh, places that we can, we where we have common ground and that we can uh, use the industrial strength in both countries to, to move the clean energy project forward. Um, so we're about out of time. Let me ask you a, a final question. And you know we're um, got a really wide variety of businesses uh, here today. What would be your advice to the businesses here today on how to really embed all of the progress that we're making under the IRA? Like what, 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 would, you, what would you say to them to ensure that all of the good that is? <laughs> well, look, I think we have provided, uh, we have enabled uh, that level of investment that I described. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of it. First of all, understand yeah. what's, what's in the law. Um, the one thing that we haven't talked about, you, you kind of made mm -hmm. my, uh, reference to it, is I think that um, one of the things that President Biden and Vice President Harris wanted to do was to ensure, as you noted, uh, a just transition, mm -hmm. uh, one that was going to uh, support not just business investment, but good paying jobs. So that puts some requirements to take yes. full advantage of the credits. You get a 5X bonus in right. many of these credits if you pay prevailing wage, if you use certified apprentices. Uh, you get an additional bonus if you invest in traditional energy communities, the places that have you know, powered uh, the American uh, economy for decades and decades and decades. Uh, and we're seeing the, the private sector respond to that with uh, a... Uh, Treasury, uh, I think uh, you'll hear about this a little bit later, but Treasury's done some analysis that uh, found that we've seen uh, twice the investment in those traditional energy communities, wow. coal communities, uh, traditional uh, fossil fuel, fuel communities that you saw before the IRA passed. Uh, and uh, so that's quite significant. Mm -hmm. uh, and just deploy, deploy, deploy. We need to go fast. Yeah. Uh, and this is the this is what's not just going to power the U.S. economy and lead to strong growth, but it's going to power the global economy uh, going forward. So, uh, you know, if you're an innovator, innovate. If you're a, <laughs> if you're somebody who's a developer, deploy. And uh, I think oh, we've got the I, I think the bill uh, has ten years of certainty. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm asked often. I think that's important that it does really have that. And that yeah, I'm often know asked, that. you know, are people going to change it? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I think, you know, as we see these projects develop, there's been 270,000 jobs uh, and counting uh, that uh, at, 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 uh, good paying jobs created. Uh, the, uh, the president today is at the uh, National Association of uh, Building Trades oh. Union today. Oh, right. We've seen a massive uh, uptake or uptick in both, uh, uh, as I said, uh, deployment of these uh, mature renewable technologies, but also in building construction, et cetera. Uh, so um, I, I would say just keep going. get on the bandwagon <laughs> and keep going. Well, um, John, thank you. And I guess on behalf of all of us, thank you for, for, for what you have done. It's amazing and uh, probably equally important what you're going to do. So Thanks, Carol. Uh, it is indeed a, a, a industrial revolution and uh, we couldn't have a better person thinking about how- It to all got it all. started when you were at the EPA. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you guys. <laughs>